Okay guys, in this second bonus um, video, it's all about how to classify different quadrilaterals. So we've got parallelograms, rectangles, squares, rhombus, rhombi, uh, trapezium, uh, nothing special, kites and arrows. Um, now, it says here nothing special, but we don't actually know what that means yet. And what makes a parallelogram a parallelogram? What makes a rhombus a rhombus? Well, I'm gonna show you two really key technical mathematical terms here uh, to help you understand why. And they are parallel lines and perpendicular lines. So we're gonna focus on parallel lines first. So um, can you see these two lines here? They are uh, going vertically up they have these two arrows here and that basically means that these two sides or lines are parallel and that means that they are equal distance apart and they will always be that distance apart no matter where this these two lines go to infinity bam, 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 or all the way down in this way they must always be this same distance apart now how i remember this with parallel lines is with train tracks now you can see that these two train tracks here are just equal uh, equal distance apart and um, and it would be the same all the way through on that line because if they were to get fatter wider or thinner more narrow then the train will obviously come off the track so they must be the same distance apart okay so that's how I remember parallel lines now we've got uh, two other pairs of parallel um, another pair of parallel lines here I've just again changed the orientation uh, so we've got diagonal uh, lines here that are parallel and again equal distance apart and therefore we can use these two arrows to say that these two are parallel now i've got a shape here a trapezium if you uh, saw the previous video on 2d shapes it has one pair of parallel sides that's why i've got just one arrow there and one arrow there so these two sides are parallel and i've got a rectangle here um, and I've shown that this uh, pair of parallel sides here with an arrow, but I just I purposely not put arrows on the other pair of parallel sides because I want to show you that um, what happens if we have two pairs of parallel sides. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to use an arrow here and an arrow here. Now I can't just use one arrow because that would suggest that this side is parallel with this side, which is not, is it? So I need to use another arrow and double it up like that okay so now that clearly shows to everybody that these two arrows means that this side is parallel with this side and this one single arrow means that this side is parallel with this side okay the second fact that we need to learn in maths is perpendicular lines all right uh, it's quite a long meaty word it's basically per pen dicular per pen dicular perpendicular have a practice see how many times you can do it see if you can do it 10 times perpendicular 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 so you can do it without making a mistake like i just did all right so um perpendicular is just basically a fancy mathematical term for right angles okay but it suggests it basically describes that these two sides here are perpendicular to each other Therefore, they are at a right angle to each other. That's basically how you use it, okay? Here's another example of two sides that are perpendicular to each other, but I've just changed the orientation. Orientation means I've just rotated it, okay, uh, upside down, just to show you that right angles uh, don't necessarily have to be in this position. They can be upside down. And then here, I've put a, uh, a right angle inside a quadrilateral here, a special quadrilateral called a kite, um, just to show you that right angles can also be found in different shapes. And in this particular shape, this kite, I've put a right angle right at the top, but uh, right angles could be here and here in a kite as well. So just make sure you're looking out for those right angles in shapes as well. Okay, so now we know what perpendicular and parallel sides are. Uh, we now will be able to identify and name each of the quadrilaterals because we'll be able to understand that and use it. So here we go. We've got a parallelogram. The clue is in the name parallel. Okay, so it has two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, and that is basically all you need to have for it to be a parallelogram. Okay, two pairs of parallel sides. And of course, it needs to be a quadrilateral. It's got four sides. That's all a parallelogram is two pairs of parallel sides. So we're gonna move on to the rectangle. And you can see that also has two pairs of parallel sides, one here and one here. Therefore, a rectangle is a special type 
of parallelogram. So if you were to put that into your exam tests or whatever you're doing uh, at school, um, if you were to put a rectangle is also a parallelogram, you would get the mark, okay? And then you might even get a special bonus mark, who knows? Um, but why is it called a rectangle and not a parallelogram here on this sheet? Well, that's because it has four right angles, okay? Or four pairs of uh, perpendicular sides, I suppose you could say. So this side is perpendicular with this side, this side is perpendicular with that side, etc. Okay, so it's got four perpendicular pairs of sides, okay? Um, so a square, uh, that is also a parallelogram, believe it or not, because it has two pairs of parallel sides again. It also has four re uh, right angles, the same as a rectangle, but we all know that a square is a square because it has equal sides, and that's why we've got those little dashes there to show that all those sides are equal. And that's what makes it different to a rectangle. But again, if you were to put that a, a square is a rectangle, you would also be correct because it has all of the same things as a rectangle. It has the four right angles and the two pairs of parallel sides. So a square is indeed a rectangle, which again blew my mind when I found that out. Okay, so then we're going on to this other quadrilateral, which again has two pairs of parallel sides. So it's another parallelogram, but it is not anything like a rectangle or square, okay? And this is why we call it a rhombus. Now, how I remember this one is basically a square that has been pushed over, okay? Somebody's just pushed it over here and it's leaning over and it, ha it must have all equal sides, okay? If it doesn't have equal sides, if it's stretched out, then of course it's going to be a parallelogram. Okay, but it is a parallelogram, but it's a special type. It has one with equal sides, so it must be a rhombus. Okay, and then we have the trapezium, which is another quadrilateral, of course, but it only has one pair of parallel sides, and that is exactly what a trapezium is. It just needs to have one pair of parallel sides and four sides. Uh, then we have nothing special, nothing going on with this one. No pairs of parallel sides, no pairs of equal sides, just not a lot going on. It's a boring one, that one. And then we have a kite, uh, which has no pairs of parallel sides, but it does have two pairs of equal length sides. Okay, so it's quite an important one for a kite. No parallel, so parallel sides, but it's got two pairs of equal length sides. And then this particular kite has two right angles. All right, so those are all the quadrilaterals. Uh, so hopefully you should be able to identify all of those. Parallelogram, rectangles, squares, rhombi, trapezium, nothing special. Uh, kites and arrows. Well done. Okay, well done boys and girls if you managed to watch both of these bonus videos on triangles and quadrilaterals. And if you come from my school, come and see me. Let me know that you've watched these bonus videos and I'll give you a special certificate to show that you, yes you, know specialist knowledge about quadrilaterals and triangles that other people won't know about because you have seen these videos. So well done. Um, and stay tuned for lesson two on 3D shapes. Mm.